Is it a dog? Is it a turtle? Is it a pope? Nah, it's Muriel, pastor of vows. The humble little nice dude that just so happens to be a massive turtle in a pope hat who teaches you all kinds of incantations. And engage in jolly cooperation. You're tarnished. When I had the idea to do that little edit, I just knew I had to make it, so. Anyway, time to paint Muriel. Now, before anyone lets me know in the comments that Muriel's actually gray and not a brown turtle, I know, I know, but looking at the old dude in the game, it's apparent he's very old and all of his colors have become very muted gray and it just wouldn't be that fun of a paint job, I don't think. So I made the executive decision to give some vibrancy back into his shell design, bring some youth back into him. So we'll grab the paints for this, mainly just centering around different shades of brown to wet blend in. I've also grabbed some orange and yellow pigments that we could mix in to add some variations of vibrancy to the browns. I did spend a while looking into different tortoise and turtle shell textures and I settled on one I quite liked. So I'm just loading up all of these colours to the wet palette so I can go between them easily as we load up different colours to the shell. First off I'm whacking on some Rhinox hide to the shell to act as the base coat. I'm keeping it quite thin as we'll be adding loads and loads of layers of lighter browns and blending between as we reach the brightest part of the centre of each of the little individual scoots. Now I had to look that word up, the scoots are the little shaped scales you find on the turtle and tortoise shells. Don't say I never teach you anything. That's proper pub quiz information that is. With this shell design, I'm creating little rings that get lighter the further we go in on each scoot. Scoot! So now I'm doing a thin layer of catechin flesh inside the Rhinox hide ring and then blending outwards. Following suit, I'm then doing the same with some Mournfang brown and making a smaller ring inside the catechin flesh ring and blending outwards again. with Zandri dust which is even lighter. Then whilst all the paint is still relatively wet I'm making sure to go back over the blends between the lines to blend them even further to try and reduce the apparent line between colours. Then for the brightest centre part of the scoot I'm using some bone colour specifically using some Ushbati bone which is just brighter than the Zandri dust. And with that process started I'm then applying this exact method to each individual scoot. So whilst doing this it is quite repetitive so I tried to think up some turtle puns to keep things spicy so so here goes. I stuck to these paints because I didn't want to shell out for more. Mm -hmm. uh, after this I'm just going to scoot off. We just learned that one. I don't want to tell you my best one because so, I'm, a, I'm a little shellfish. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit chilly in here, so I guess I have to go and put on a turtleneck. Mm. Uh, this section's really gone turtly disastrous. Mm. I thought this would work out better, but I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just a little shell shocked. God damn it! Hey, we watched Dark Souls models paint a turtle today, and it taught us nothing. It's taught us turtle. That was atrocious. Moving on. I'm painting the skin with some Rakar flesh. This will act as the light base coat of his skin. Now, obviously, I have seen that his skin is a little bit grayer, but because we're already changing his shell, I decided that this color was more appropriate to match it. Then I'm just dipping back into the different shades of brown we already have to create the shadow parts around his skin. and nostrils I'm using Abaddon Black. And for 
his underbelly, I'm just slapping on some Zandri dust. It's not really going to be seen, so it's not massively important to go crazy on it. Then I'm blending in different browns on the sides of the shell to blend down to the underparts. Then doing the exact same as we did before with the neck, I'm just repeating the process across all of his legs. Since I've got some time to kill here, I might as well talk a little bit about Elden Ring. I didn't really mess about too much with incantations on my first playthrough. I say first playthrough, I only played it through once because it took me months to complete it. I sort of focused heavily on intelligence and sorcery at the beginning. It was really OP and I kind of felt like I was cheating the game at one point because it was so powerful and I kind of navigated away from intelligence halfway through the game and I moved on to your classic Dark Souls strength build with a massive greatsword. I stuck with that for a bit, I was really enjoying it. Um, I didn't really want to become uh, one of the two-handed katana decks wielders but then after a while I thought well since I've already done intelligence I've done strength I may as well try and incorporate something else I then went and learned all of the dragon incantations so I sort of became this hybrid blend of strength and dragon faith so it's pretty cool mixture by the end of it I really varied quite a lot during my playthrough but I guess that's half the fun on my second playthrough I might I might go and delve into some deck stuff just to really branch out. But yeah, that's kind of how my first playthrough went. For the Pope hat, I'm basing it with some Corax white. Then to add some shade to the hat, I'm mixing in some Celestra grey. the little decals on the hat and putting on some retributor armor to make it all lovely and gold and shimmery. Now to finish this fella off I'm adding some varnishes to him. First off I'm adding this gloss varnish from Green Stuff World to the shell which should not only act as a sort of dust barrier but also give it that glossy shiny look that you see shells like this have. Now this is my first time properly applying varnish to a model, so I'm hoping it works out. I think it looks pretty good. Then the turtle skin isn't shiny, so I'm using the opposite of the gloss varnish, which is matte varnish. Don't know who Matt is, but I've got his varnish. And this is just going to go all over the skin, giving him a proper spa treatment here. And with that varnish applied, I'm going to leave him to dry and just tidy up around him. Now I'm thinking this is going to be a two part video because what I really want to do is create a grassy base with some chapel building and rubble around him to really kind of bring this little happy chappy to life. So make sure to look out for that one in the near future another pointing montage. I realistically just wanted an excuse to bring my little dog Nula into shot. I think that was the perfect excuse to be honest. Anyway, thanks for tuning in for another episode. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It really does help these videos and this channel as a whole gain traction. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it from me. I want to thank you again for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one.